It can be really useful to have different ways to approach the same chord. Because that means that if the chord comes along several times in a song, or if you want to play more choruses, then you have that as a variable as well, and you can get a new sound out of that, not only by playing new lines. In this video I'm going to go over three different ways to approach a minor chord. So that's the kind of thing where um, you will probably use it on a song that's in a minor key, so something like a minor blues or summertime or invitation. And um, there are fairly common ways to approach the minor sounds, but they're also different. And I'm going to go over some lines and talk a little bit about the notes and the scales that you should use. Um, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about phrasing and uh, and the melodies that you make because I think that's a, just as big a part of the sound. So it's not only about what the notes are, but it's also about how you use them. The line that I played in the beginning of this video is using a melodic minor as a minor sound. This is a very common thing to use for tonic minor chords in jazz and has been for a long time. Uh, and um, if we look at uh, the melodic minor scale, so the D melodic minor scale in the fifth position, then we get this scale. <laughs> So the melodic minor scale has a major 6 and a major 7, so in this case the major 6 is the B and the major 7 is the C sharp. And uh, the chords that I'm playing to sort of get this sound across uh, would be a minor 6 chord and a minor major chord. So the riff I have is this. So really sort of sitting down first a minor 6 with a 9 and then a minor major sound. And in the line I'm also emphasizing this, so the line is constructed out of uh, first this arpeggio, which is a D minor major with a 9, and then we get a G major triad, again with the B really uh, present, and then we get an uh, F augmented triad, and then the last triad is a basically an E minor triad, again with a really clearly a B, and then I end on this E. So melodic minor is really connected to sort of a modern jazz sound, so you might as well use some of the melodic techniques that is associated with uh, that style of music. And that means using uh, something like triad pairs like I'm doing in the line, so in this case I'm using a, an F augmented and uh, a G major triad. And that will sort of spell out. You want to, of course, really emphasize the C sharp and the B, so that's one good way of doing that. Uh, another thing that's important is to use arpeggios with extensions, which is the D minor uh, 9, a D minor major with a 9. And also, it can be uh, a good idea to check out some of the sort of larger uh, arpeggio constructions, like a drop 2 voicing, like this. Even though that's not what I'm using in the example that I gave here. The next example is the Dorian scale. The Dorian sound is probably the most used sound on a minor chord since Miles Davis released Kind of Blue sometime in the 50s. Uh, and you'll also find it really incorporated into compositions like Joe Henderson's Recorder May or uh, Wes Montgomery's 4 and 6, which is sort of built on Summertime, in fact. Uh, the chords that I'm using to sort of get this sound across are also lifted from uh, 4 and 6 because it's just a 2 5 with a D minor chord. So uh, the riff is uh, this. <laughs> If you have to play a D Dorian scale in the fifth position, which is of course the same as a C major, you will get this scale. So, with the Dorian sound, what we need to sort of look at is that uh, we of course have, it's just a D minor scale again, so uh, most of it is the same as the melodic minor, except now we have a major 6 and a minor 7. If you combine the two in a chord, you get a D minor with a 13, so something like this. Which is, of course, something you will find in some songs. Uh, Hancock uses it a lot, Bill Evans has a few songs where it's in, like uh, Time Remembered. But um, I think also a lot of the time, because it's coming out of the Dorian sound and using that as sort of a modal sound uh, in, in that kind of situation, uh, is something that's also coming along together with Coltrane and uh, McCoy Tyner. So uh, if you're playing on this, then using uh, stacks of fours is something that's really useful. And that's also how I'm playing the line that uh, I just played in the beginning of this. I start off with a stack of fours from D, then 
I'm kind of adding a leading note and then just taking sort of the other side in a minor pentatonic tonic scale. So this is in this case just a, a D minor triad, and then up to the ninth. And then to emphasize the sound of the the sound of the 13, I'm sort of sustaining the B here. Then another D minor line, uh, which is like a D minor seven. And then again emphasizing the 13. You're probably already used to playing a Dorian sound on a two chord in a 2-5-1 cadence. Uh, but here you want to use, of course, the same thing, so just a D minor 7 and an F major 7 uh, and a D minor pentatonic and all those things that you normally use on a 2-5-1. Uh, but you want to combine it with also just really sort of bringing out that 13 sound so that you can hear that the scale has that major 6. And um, probably what you want to do is just to make lines with, uh, with all those sort of normal um, structures that you're used to, so use the the, um, the D minor 7 arpeggio. So. And then what I'm doing here is, of course, I'm just really... using that, like, bringing this out, repeating that note, or ending on it down here, uh, and in that way sort of getting the both the D minor 7 sound, but also really that 13 out there, and that's going to give you a more sort of stronger sound than just playing a D minor as you would in a 2-5-1. I think that's an important thing to also just check out when you're working with, uh, with Dorian as a sort of tonic uh, minor sound. So in this last example I'm using the blues scale as a minor sound. And the blues scale in this case is actually more of a, almost like a special effect and doesn't necessarily connect too well with the song and stuff, it's really just something that we're putting on top because we can add a different sound. And uh, if you look at the blues scale, so if I play the blues scale in this uh, position... Then they're all notes, except for this A-flat that's anyway sort of a passing note, they are notes that are just already found in, uh, in Dorian. So the, the main thing that you need to work with when you want to get sort of a blues sound across is how you phrase the notes. It's not so much about, about the notes themselves, but it's more about how you play them. So um, since I don't really have any chords, then the riff that I'm playing behind the blues is also sort of using that idea a little bit, and it's basically just sort of using Dorian as an example. So then you get this. <laughs> So it is sort of a D minor 7, D minor 6 type sound. Uh, also because the other place where you would expect to find blues is where you have like like a, a minor sound on top of a major chord. But right now we are already on a minor uh, minor sound, so we're not we're not really going to get that. Um, but at the same time, you can still just with the phrasing get a lot of it, and I think it's a way of playing that you're probably already familiar with. And it's definitely something that you also want to have in your vocabulary, also when you're playing a jazz standard. I mean, if you check out, uh, again, Wes's solo on 4 and 6, or actually any of his 3 or 4 solos on 4 and 6, there's always going to be stuff that's, that's blues related. Um, so for that, it's a, it's a very useful thing to just be able to throw in there as well, and you probably already know how it sounds, so it's not so difficult to really get that into your system. So the line is just using, uh, most of the time, actually the D minor pentatonic scale, and then with... Uh, the the flat five as a sort of a leading note. So if I play the line slowly that's that's all that's happening. There are no real arpeggios. Uh, it's all about it's all about phrasing I think. So it's more about the slides sitting in the groove. Um, and also making dynamic uh, differences by using hammer-ons and pull-offs. And then in this case, which is maybe different from swing, uh, when you want to get the blues sound across, you actually want to have like the loud note on the beat. Which is of course different from normally when we try to uh, accent the upbeat in a bebop phrase. So there were three different sounds that you can use on a minor chord, especially like a tonic minor chord. I think it's important, I already mentioned it, but I think it's really important that you um, 
that you think of these as more than just the scales. I named them after the scales because that's just sort of an easy way to name them. But uh, I think it's also clear that there, it's not only the scales that are changing. If you're not sort of very conscious about which note you emphasize or how you're playing, so in, in, in the example with the blues, it's more about the phrasing and how you, um, how you make the melodies than it is about what the notes are. And uh, that means that if you want to use this, you have to have a clear idea about what the sound is. So you might want to spend some time just uh, really making up a, a lot of lines for, for these different sounds and really making sure that they are specific to the sound, that you're not making a Dorian line that actually sounds like a melodic minor line, for instance. Uh, so yeah, so that has to be really clear if you want to use it. If you want to check out how I'm using this, then you can check out the web store lesson that I made uh, where I uh, transcribed four choruses of uh, my own soloing on um, Summertime. Uh, and I made a lesson that's explaining about that uh, and how the different lines are constructed and uh, the kind of sounds and also the kind of uh, melodic material I'm using. So uh, I'll link to that in the description. If you want to download the, a PDF of the examples that I went over in uh, this video, then you can go to the article on my website. Uh, in the article there's a PDF download of the examples. And uh, while you're on my website you can also sign up for my uh, newsletter if you want to stay up to date with all the stuff that's happening. Uh, on my channel and uh, on my website and if I'm playing somewhere and stuff like that. If you have any questions about this lesson or if you have ideas for uh, topics for other videos or if there's something that I touched upon in uh, this video that you would like to see um, a more explanation on then uh, leave a comment on this video uh, or connect with me on social media. I'm on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Google+. Uh, and it's nice to get feedback from you guys. It's gonna it helps me make better lessons, and uh, it's also just uh, just fun to hear what you think. And uh, if something is unclear, it's also nice to know that, of course. So that's about it for this week. Thank you for watching, and uh, on to next week.